Hi everybody and thanks for viewing this YouTube fly tying tutorial. The pattern that I'm going to be tying for you today is one that was created by a gentleman by the name of Ian Colin James. This fly is known as Ian's Brass Ass, though for the sake of being appropriate I'm going to be calling it Ian's Brass Derriere. This fly was originally created in the Great Lakes region by Ian for use on steelhead and brown trout that are running um, up from those lakes into the streams and rivers, and it has done a great job catching those fish. Though fishermen started to realize that because of its weight, this isn't just a steelhead or a salmon fly. This is a fly that can be used for trout all over the country and the world for grayling and lots of other fish. Um, I really encourage you to check this out. Though it has been a while, around for quite a while, it really hasn't found its way into the boxes of a lot of fishermen. Though if you check Orvis's website, they are selling it, which you know should tell you right away there, there must be some validity to this pattern. It has some characteristics of almost a copper john in that it's got so much copper wire in it, which means it's super heavy and it gets right down to where the fish are. So I'm wrapping some ADOT black thread down about halfway to, um, we'll say two thirds of the way down the hook bend. And let me tell you a little bit about the hook. I'm using a hook by Allen Fly Fishing. This is their N203BL. The BL stands for a barbless. This is basically a cat pupa hook. Um, I really recommend one of theirs or a, a similar pupa hook that has a little bit of wire to it because if you are fishing for steelhead or salmon with this hook, you want to ensure that that hook is going to really maintain grip and it's not going to bend out of those the, the mouth of a big fish. Once I have my ADOT thread uh, tied down there, I'm going to grab a piece of some, bra uh, some, we'll say some brassy ultra wire. I'm going to be using the color of chartreuse today. Uh, the color is truly up to you. In Ian's original pattern, it's actually just the copper color. However, I really like to vary it, and this chartreuse color really just seems to catch fish. Not just steelhead, but lots of fish. Okay, I've just tied on a portion, I've just locked in just a little portion of this ultra wire. I'll just flip that around for you to see. And what am I do now after having that just small portion tied in? I'm going to make sure I have it locked, and then I'm going to build up that transition point from where I tied it in the whole way around the bend of the hook and up to the hook shank. That way whenever I'm wrapping that wire forward it doesn't all just really seem to look like there's a big clump at the back and then it smooths out along the hook shank. I want it to look like it's just one nice smooth rotation the whole way up. I'm going to stop my thread right at around the hook point. So whenever your thread's hanging pretty much at that hook point that's where you want to stop. Now, if you want to kind of move it forward a little bit to get it out of the way while you're wrapping, that's fine. But that stopping point is pretty much right there. All right, at this point, I'm going to start to, to wrap my ultra wire. As you start to wrap, you're really going to uh, soon realize just how much wire you have and you're going to be using on this pattern. Don't be afraid to really leave this portion size really long until you start to figure out exactly how much you'll need. As I'm wrapping, I'm really pulling rel relatively firm on this wire, I want to make sure each wrap just touches the, the previous one. You might see that black thread popping out in between your um, your wraps, and that's fine if you do that. It's not like uh, we're necessarily going to be selling some of these patterns. This is a fish fish catching pattern. And as I get near that midpoint, that's going to just take a little extra time. Get that one or two extra wrap in there when I'm pretty much straight up from that um, from that hook point, I'm just going to put a couple locking wraps in. Let me show you a little, little trick here. I'm next going to bend that wire forward, grab a pair of scissors you, you use to cut wire with, and just cut it off just before the eye of the hook. For the front of this Ian's Brass Derriere, he has a really dark head. And you're going to have to create that yourself with your thread. By building up that head, it could take a lot of time, so my tip is leave that ultra wire in there. It'll build up the head a little faster, plus it'll give you a little added weight at the front. My advice while doing this, I, I wouldn't recommend switching to a 6 aught thread, simply because when you go to tie off your fly, it'll just add a lot of extra bulk at the eye. Now, if you're using a, a larger size hook, sure, go for it. This is a size 14 here. I'll, I'll tie this anywhere between sizes 10 down to si size 20. And I'm just going to keep winding until it gets to about the same diameter as the body. Once I'm about there, I'm going to come back to my wire and stop. Just take a quick peek. Make sure there's no wire 
popping through anywhere. And at that point, I'm ready to tie in a little bit of tinsel. I'm going to be using some hollow tinsel today. It's size medium. On Ian's original, it, it's a size small. The reason I like size medium is because I really love this the effect that this gives off through that epoxy head. So I'm just going to tie a little bit onto one side. Lock it in place. I'll show you exactly what this looks like. And I cut a relatively long piece, so I'm just going to cut it in half. and lock it in place on the other side as well. Once I have it locked in place on both sides, I'm just gonna wrap back, ensure that each side is really going pretty much straight back. As you wrap forward, ideally you'd like to cover all that tinsel. Is it really critical? Absolutely not, because you're gonna be bringing that tinsel forward. So I'll wrap the whole way up to the eye. I'm gonna next hold onto the tinsel on my side going to bring it straight forward and just make one or two wraps at the eye of the hook, locking it in place. Once I have it locked in place, I'm going to come over to your side. And do the exact same. Now, whenever I made that wrap, the tinsel just seemed to tuck under a little bit. I don't like that. I really want it just, just nice and firm against that eye. like this. Once I have both pieces locked in, I am simply going to pinch them back just a hair, hold them back with my fingers, make one wrap, and put a half hitch just so I know they're not going anywhere. Next you want to grab a really sharp pair of scissors and trim them as close to that eye and the head as possible. Once I have the tinsel trimmed out of the way, then I'm just going to pinch back just a little bit more again. And as you finalize those last few wraps, all that tinsel that, that you tuck back should, for the most part, now be hidden. I just want to make sure I get all those little pieces out of there so they're not really gleaming by that black head. Once they are, I'm going to put in one more half hitch. Just a quick whip finish. I don't have to worry too much because all that thread is going to be hiding under my epoxy. And then trim my thread out of the way. Alright, at this stage, we are nearly complete. You can see that the, that tinsel is showing up real nice on both sides, really just giving off some nice gleam. And now you're to the point where you can add some 5 minute epoxy or if you're into the UV glues, some UV glue. Being that it's really quick to add this UV glue and it's, it seems extremely durable, that's what I'm going to use. Whenever I apply the UV glue, I'm going to be applying it directly to the head and let a little of it go back towards the body. Then I might grab just my bodkin and just make sure I um, even everything out. If Sometimes I'll put a second coat directly on the head because I like to bulk that up. But I will show you what the original looks like. So I'm going to ensure that I go to those proportions now. So you can see I'm just putting a little bit on the head. Get a little bit more in there, just let it bulk up a hair. At this point, I'm going to grab my bodkin, spread it around, make sure I'm having, I'm having that everywhere. I want to make sure there's glue covering all this wire the whole way back, and that's completely encasing the head. As I'm looking at this pattern, it looks like I can put just a hair more on the head. I don't want to add any dramatic amount. So if it does bubble up, which I'm, I'm assuming this will, what I'll simply do is just grab that excess, place it onto my bodkin, and then just wipe it on a piece of paper that I have around my bench. Once again, I'm just going to even all this out the whole way back to the hook, or I'm sorry, to the bend of the hook. Once it looks like it's i got the approximate amount in there. I'm just going to grab my UV flashlight, shine it on the top for approximately 10 seconds. Rotate and do the same. If 
if you've watched any of my videos before, I am never trusting of this stuff, though it is always dry whenever I stop. But for the sake of time and for the sake of this video, I am going to stop it there and I want to give you a quick peek at the Ian's Brass Derriere. This is a great looking fly. This is such a fun fly to fish, being that it's just so heavy, it's got a nice sleek look to it and it simply catches fish. As I pointed out before, the original is typically tied in a copper color, though I will vary that color quite a bit. Whenever you're tying in that hollow tinsel, that holographic tinsel, I use the size medium, though it does call for a size small. Some guys I'll notice that they'll bury that tinsel just a little bit further in and really build up the head, though I like that head just slightly larger than the body. Well, thank you for viewing this YouTube fly tying tutorial of Ian's Brass Derriere. Special thanks go out to Allen Fly Fishing for the use of their N203BL hook. And thanks to all of you for viewing this tutorial. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them directly on this YouTube page, or you can email me at tkamisa at gmail.com. Thanks everybody for viewing this tutorial.